Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of the Sports Exchange. My name is Scott Morganroth, the Motor City Mad Mouth, along with my co-host, Jake Ronghold. Well, Jake, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, you know, just a couple of weeks till the Christmas season. Looking forward to seeing some family soon. Well, I'm, I have the luxury of seeing it right now here in Wisconsin. Great family I have, but we got to keep the fluidity of the network uh, the South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Network going along with our shows. I'm having a good time in Wisconsin. Looking forward to being here over the course of the next seven days. We've been here a couple of days. A lot of work to get done. So we'll, with that said, let's get right to it. Our top headline is Garrett, Garrett Cole going ahead and signing that nine-year deal worth $324 million with a five-year op, uh, opt-out and a no trade. What are your thoughts about the uh, New York Yankees doling out that kind of dole? Go. You had to. I mean, you're the New York Yankees. You have the highest payroll in baseball. You have the best resources. And, I mean, you're a team that has won 28 World Series in their lives. And when you have a team like when you got Glaber Torres coming out last year and you got the strong pitching for Luis Severino and all this, but they were missing something because they didn't have that ace. They didn't have that Mike Lucina kind of style player. Now you do a Garrett Cole who coming off a, a 20-win season with a 2.50 ERA. The craziest thing about it is that Cole and Scott Boris's agent, by the way, they call him Mr. December at this point, came up with this great idea to have a fifth-year clause. Now, Cole is 29 years old, so he's going to be heading into his 30s here. So let's say that they hit that 34-year-old mark, and then come to this point where it's like, okay, you know, Cole, you gave us a, a World Series ring, and I'm just speculating or something, but it's just not working out. Okay, Cole can move on, and he can go finish his career somewhere else. It's a strong contract. I know people are looking at this and going, oh, it's way too much money, Jake. Well, if you think that's too much money, then why did the Nationals, Scott, give Steven Strasburg seven years, $245 million? According to this, Cole and Strasburg now have the two richest contracts in Major League Baseball history for a pitcher. I like this move. It is more bull over bear. And, I mean, it, I'm not surprised the Yankees had to do this because otherwise he was going to head back to the eight. He was going to go back to his hometown in Orange County and play with the Los Angeles Angels. This is a great move by the Yankees. Well, not only that, you know, the Yankees snap up a guy that was their postseason nemesis, a Houston Astros. So you take him oh, yeah. out of Houston, bring him to, to New York, and my goodness, I think the Astros take one big hit. One. If they don't take that, they take a garbage truck full of trash cans with them. Yeah, it kind of makes you wonder, though, when you lose a <laughs> thoroughbred like that, I, you know, you wonder about the regression of the Houston Astros after that. I don't know how pit deep their pitching is, but let's think about the Astros for a moment. You lose Charlie Morton to the Tampa Bay Rays, and now you lose Garrett Cole, and everybody knows that pitching is the evil necessity to be able to make it through that 162 games. I don't care about all that business about uh, the um, relievers uh, picking up starts. Forget that. That will be for another day. But you take them away from the Astros, and all of a sudden the Astros sink to a much different level. They don't become a 100-win team. They're probably a mid-'80s, uh, maybe early-'90s win team at all when you take away that production out of their uh, – well, well, there are two things location. right now that i got to say about the Astros, okay, because they're still waiting to hear what Major League Baseball is going to say. Now, there was a report that came out yesterday that uh, they have gone through 60 different witnesses – they're not going to have this done by uh, 2019, so it's going to push into 2020. I don't know if they're going to try and get this punishment out before the season or during the season. So there's a lot of questions right now. However, the Astros still got Justin Verlander. They still got Zach Greinke. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Greinke. Are they going to be able to keep him, or was he just you know like a rent a pitcher at this point? There's still Corey Kluber out there. Matthew Boyd for the Tigers. Robbie Ray was a blessing in disguise for the Arizona Diamondbacks. This young stud out of Miami, Caleb Smith, uh, Hinjun Ru, uh, Madison Bumgarner, and Dallas Keuchel. So if the Astros do feel like, for example, bringing back Dallas Keuchel, they can do that. They still have a very good ace in Justin Verlander. They still got a top-notch hitting. The only question that I have now, the second one, is – there was a report that came out two days ago 
The Carlos Correa right now, it could be on the trading block that the Astros could let him go. So there's a lot of those two questions kind of swimming around in my mind right now with the Astros going forward. And like I said, now you can look at it and go, yeah, Yankees are better than the Astros going forward, but don't count on the Astros quite yet until that punishment is uh, brought down by Major League Baseball. No, I won't count them yet, but let's look at the recent trend, Jake. Uh, in, okay. uh, in years, the Kansas City Royals get their world championship. Hard to retain a lot of key players. Now yeah. the Washington Nationals falling into the same trap. You know, you win that championship base. Fans in the area, you know, they've got that title. Okay, so we're not worried about going another 50, 100 years or a lifetime without a drop. You got that World Series championship. And now you see the, so you, you see the trend. The Washington Nationals, the Astros are going to fall into that trap. Kansas City Royals, and there'll be other ones as well that you'll be able to uh, find out as time goes on. So I'm with you all the way. I, I think it's interesting. I won't count the Astros out, but they better have a few more additions than subtractions, although I will tell you, you did bring up some interesting names, that uh, pitching names that they could land, but it's all going to come down to the old mighty dollar. How much more do they uh, go over? Do they want to pay – uh, the lug over the luxury tax and what's motivating these moves to begin with. But let's face it, okay, Garrett Cole is an outright thoroughbred. Yes, he, he is. is. CC, you know how they really paid for that contract, don't you? CC the Sabathia came off the books, and then they went yep. ahead and, uh, and reinvested another twenty million or so to get him in. But the Yankees have the endless resources to do it. And I think the biggest thing about the Yankees, though, Jake, is that this is the first time in their franchise history that they had been to a World Series in a decade. And don't tell me that wasn't motivating because you know full well it, indeed it was. It was motivating because it always felt like now the Yankees were going from the world, were going from the brides to the twice divorced bridesmaids now, and that, that's what's been happening with the Yankees. They've been waiting to try and get back to back on track with what they were trying to accomplish, and they couldn't do it. And they needed something, and like I, I told people last year, you know, the Yankees, yeah, you got great hitting. Yeah, you got the most home runs in Major League Baseball history in a single season. Number two was the Twins, but the thing is, is that you need pitching in the postseason, and if you don't have that, there's no way, <laughs> there's no way that you're going to win, and they found that out the hard way against the Houston Astros last year when they ran into that buzzsaw of Garrett Cole, Zach Greinke, and Justin Verlander. And then even Wade Miley kind of stepped in a little bit as well. So th there was that issue with the Yankees. They knew they were coming out with it. New York fans were going crazy. We all knew that they were going to try and make Garrett Cole a very rich man because he was either going there or he was going to the Los Angeles Angels. But when you have been a, a Yankees fan all your life and then you get that opportunity to go play for the pinstripes, you go. And that's the rule of baseball. If you were a Yankees fan as a kid, you're going to be a Yankee. Good point. Yeah, that's true. When the Yankees call, you go. No doubt about that. I like that. So, with that said, anything else you want to add about the uh, Garrett Cole signing? Well, staying in the American League West. Now, think about this for a moment. Talking about a team that still on the books has guys like Mike Trout, who just got a 12-year, $425 million deal. Albert Pujols is still being paid. C.J. Wilson, long gone, but still being paid right now. The Los Angeles Angels went on and made, I, I guess want to call a quote-unquote bullseye by bringing in Anthony Rendon from the Washington Nationals. And it, it's going to bulk up their lineup because their third baseman, they needed one last year because David Fletcher was on the, the lineup, and he really didn't do much. He only had six home runs on the year, and he had a 290 batting average. But they pulled out all the stops. They lost out on Cole. They went and got Anthony Rendon. So now you bulk up that lineup. But, but, Scott, there is still a problem there, and it's the pitching right now for the Angels. It's a disaster. Yeah, it is. But, but you know what? Joe Madden, okay, we'll figure it out. And you know what? As long as they can continue to get a lot of offensive production, based on what you just mentioned, Jake, okay, that there are a lot of quality arms, who's to say that they won't be able to try to land one or two of those? 
Yeah, and they do have that chance because the good news is before they signed Rendon, they were $70 million under the luxury tax. That's excellent, especially when you just gave all that money to a guy like Mike Trout last year for 12 years. You're still able to create a below the luxury tax because there's a lot of teams in baseball that still have that issue, and they're still trying to swim out of that disaster right now. And I'm, I give a lot of credit to the Angels for, you know, making this move. But you talked about Joe Madden here for a minute. That The problem I have with this is, is that when he was in Chicago, he went through three different pitching coaches, and the pitching actually got worse year to year to year. So I don't know if I can put too much trust in Madden's uh, ability to contain pitchers going forward. So I, I just – Still a little messed up right now with this team because look at this. Andrew Caney, 4.91 ERA. Griffin Canning, 4.58. Jamie Beria, who the heck is that? 6.42. Jose Suarez, 7.11. 5.38 for Dylan Peters. And then um, also they lost uh, last year Tyler Skaggs, uh, his ERA. It wasn't good either. So they had a grand total of a 5.12. And like I said before, you're in a... You're in a successful division with the, with the the Astros, those Rangers that came off a 78-84 season. They're trying to bulk up here again. But now you got the Angels there, and you got the Astros now battling it out here for this. And they know that the Astros still have that excellent lineup. Now the Angels are going to have that with Rendon and um, Mike Trout. They're going to have that one-two punch. But like I said with Joe Madden, you got to understand the pitching. That's one thing that really gets them. Uh, that really just kind of questions right now. Uh, this move by the Angels. Well, you mentioned something here, and the way I look at the Angels and the Astros, it's like bridging the gap. You know what I mean with some mm-hmm. of these moves. And that's exactly what you have to do is during the off season is you want to bridge the gap when you have two teams that close. Because you know what, at that, that particular point. That's when you deal with injuries coming into play, and in baseball more so, since it's a numbers kind of thing. You, you know, guys that don't play up to their capabilities, and then how many wins is that or losses is that worth? Another two to four, and they right there, and then you're almost boarding around uh, being even at that point. So you have to look at the variables when you bridge the gap. Your additions and subtractions, okay, and then the ability to factor injuries along with the, a lot of different aspects of this thing. So I'm with you. Uh, yeah, will Joe Madden be uh, able to uh, have an impact on the pitching staff? It's anybody's guess. But if you bring the offense in there and you anticipate that even though you didn't get one guy, there's another a few million dollars here and there to get somebody else, and you, and you outscore teams, it, it'll certainly be an interesting dynamic for sure. Well, it's going to be an interesting dynamic because now he is an angel for life. Uh, there is no trade clause and there is no opt-out clause right now as we speak of Rendon's contract. So he's pretty much going to go all out with the Los Angeles Angels and hopefully they can be able to you know, get into the World Series. I mean, Mike Trout has only been in the postseason one time in his career. Now you've got that one-two punch with Rendon and Trout going forward. But I want to see something on the pitching. Now, the thing is, we are only in the early days of the hot stove here. I mean, the funny thing is, last year, the hot stove didn't get anything going until at least March when all the talk about Manny Machado and Bryce Harper started up here. So for us to get, you know, this early serving of hot stove news, we're just kind of, you know, I'm a baseball freak when it comes to this. So I'm really excited. But I also want to look at that other side and go, okay, if they're going to have this amazing lineup, are you going to help with the pitching going forward, too? Because, like I said, that was a mess last year, and that's how the Astros were able to win the division. Okay. What other hot stove news comes to mind that you want to talk about? Well, it's interesting right now with what the Phillies are doing because, I don't know, I kind of go back to this uh, film. The My third favorite movie of all time is the movie Wall Street with Michael Douglas and Charlie Sheen. And unfortunately, Daryl Hannah, that's a story for another time. And uh, they, they, the thing is, got the great quotes. You got this great scenes. See, Jimmy's performance by Michael Douglas. This feels like Wall Street money never sleeps right now. That 
Bill faded sequel. It was just okay. You know, it, uh, Douglas coming back, 